going on, guys? It's Will, and today is the episode of Smoking with the Owner. I am the one of the owners and founder of Base Smokes, and uh, today we're going to be smoking on some Blue Cherry Gelato. Honestly, I got a bunch of samples sent here, and uh, my goal was to just go through all of them and do like strain reviews every night. I pretty much smoke, I try to just smoke once a day at the end of the day, and just kind of review new strains every day. That's kind of what I do, do anyway, just kind of for the company and making sure what we sell is good and it should be priced according to what I think it should be priced for. And um, I figure I might as well start recording it. So I'm not, I'm not the best uh, weed reviewer by any means at all. I do not have uh, the most distinguished palate by any means, but I am funny. I do know how to roll a really good joint, and uh, I'm recording this, so you're probably going to watch it. Anyway, bust this bag open. <sighs> oh, man. I really love the smell of this one because it's, like it's like a blueberry pine. It just brings back good memories of, of some other shit that I used to smoke like back in my hometown. I feel like a really strong pine smell. I I just like cuz I like uh, I like pine like Christmas trees. I like snowboarding and stuff like that. But anyway, let's let's bust the bag open. Whew. See, this is like it's like a beautiful purple. I'm not really sure. Oh, this is two nugs stuck together. Oh wait. That's just like the stickiness of the nug. So normally what I do is I always take the best looking nug and I'll break the tip off of it and I'll smoke that. Gotta empty the grinder from what it had in it before. So I get a good, freshly cleansed palate, you know? Oh man. I'm like really excited for this one. It was an indica bag. I think like the piney, the pinene is the name of the terpene, I'm pretty sure, but I think that is like a little bit of a sativa -y kind of terpene, but I'll let you know as soon as I smoke it. Oh. Man, I gotta, I gotta do like an ASMR of these nugs cracking. I love weed so much. See, this is like, this is like just a, a passion project of mine. It's something that I have been doing for a long time and uh, ultimately it turned into this business. Oh, this looks so beautiful. I feel blessed that just the industry is the way that it is. My goal with this, with this company, with what I'm doing, you know, being a part of this industry in general is like, it's in kind of a weird area now, right? Like how the law is that we're able to do what we do. Um, there's definitely a lot of people who want to see this industry go away, which is really sad to me because ultimately I like what this is about is that people have access to good cannabis at good prices all over the country they have lots of strain options and it's legal like if you get caught with this you get pulled over and it's in your car or whatever not smoking in your car don't don't smoke and drive like don't be ridiculous that's just as harmful as drinking and driving some people are going to argue otherwise but don't do that you know we try to go above and beyond in terms of like enforcing extra compliance on ourselves and you know, obviously, like, we already are fully compliant with all the hemp guidelines, but I'm trying to take it to the next level. I'm trying to be fully compliant with, like, what the regulations would be, like, if it was, like, fully, um, fully recreationally legal. Because, like, that's what I would like to see Bay Smokes as an advocate of that. And, uh, more so than anything, like, uh... I guess a, a pillar, like, right? I want to be an example for, for other companies as best as I can of what the industry should look like. Because in the best case scenario, you know, we're able to just keep doing this uh, indefinitely and just keep growing and getting bigger and, and like keep making our company bigger and better. Right now we have like 40 employees or something like that. I don't know exactly, but that's a lot of people and um man there's something weird going on in florida right now i guess that's why that, this is on my mind and that's why i'm talking about it florida is like trying to pass this 
a law that would basically shut down the hemp industry. And like, I moved my business to Florida almost three years ago. Same sort of situation. Oh man, that looks so pretty. The, the when it's like straight purple like this in the joint. This is the end of my work day, by the way. I work probably like 12 hours a day. So basically at the end of this work day, when I'm finally rolling up, it's like getting close to midnight here. My brain is fried. I'm already exhausted from all the nonsense I deal with on a daily basis and all the stress and everything. So kind of just go and let my brain just like unwrap and, and just <laughs> just kind of spill what's what's on the noggin as I'm rolling up. These are thoughts that I otherwise would have just kept to myself or ranted to my partner about. We're going in on this inside out joint. But yeah, like what I was saying, um, Florida is trying to pass something Today it passed, uh, I don't know the exact uh, term, like it passed like the, the house floor or something like that. And man, the medical marijuana companies are really trying to lobby in Florida against the hemp industry, which is wild to me. Because like, we're all pushing the same product, but there's just people in this industry that are trying to monopolize it. And for the consumer, that is a terrible, terrible thing that only five or 10 companies run all the weed in the country. That's a terrible thing. And if we look at like the California market, for example, they're a lot more open. It's a hell of a lot more than just five companies doing their shit over there. But because the government tried to step in and do things a weird way and the taxes are so high and all the regulations are so crazy, most of California is black market still making this legal and safe for everybody, and also bringing it out of the black market and just into like a regular business where people like myself and other mom and pop store owners, where anyone can just start up a store and make it a dispensary as long as they follow the guidelines. I don't think it needs to have some crazy, super expensive license that it's like really hard and expensive to get in the game. Because at the end of the day, it's just a plant. You know, anyone can grow this really easily it does not take that much to do it and especially if you're just growing for yourself the plant is really easy to grow it kind of grows itself if you get good seeds kind of just grows itself so it's like why do we have to have so many people in the middle of it and so much regulation around it imagine if this much regulation was around like tomatoes like you know how expensive tomatoes would be and how shitty tomatoes would be because only two people would be producing them oh man that's a lot of keef in there this was a super frosty strain. Probably could have put more in here. I like to roll a really big joint, even though I'll be honest, I do not smoke anywhere close to the whole thing. I smoke every day pretty much, but like I said, I only smoke at the end of the day and I don't smoke the whole thing. Everything's good in moderation. I love cannabis, I really do, I always have, but everything's good in moderation. And nowadays, guys, this stuff is strong. Like. You really don't need to be going too crazy with it. If you follow along my, my rant and ramble, I appreciate you. Just know that me and my family, all of my family, because a lot of my family is now involved in this business, working at the warehouse, with the farm, with the marketing side of things. One way or another, a lot of my family is involved in this business. A lot of my girlfriend's family, all involved in this business. And uh, we appreciate you. Oh my God. When you taste it like off the dry pool, after you after you like finally roll up the joint and you like take the top off like that, boom, boom, boom. Uh, in case y'all weren't following along, that was the inside out joint. So I rip off all this extra paper so you don't, there's no need to smoke just the extra paper. I rip off the tip off the front. You just kind of like lick it around the edge and then just rip it off. It rips off real smooth when it's like slightly wet. I'll smoke inside, about to head outside. Light this thing up. I had a, um, somebody come over today, a YouTube guy. We we're talking about doing a line with him. So we got a bunch of other cool collab lines on the way. I like doing these collab lines because in my head, like I don't care what packaging gets sold in. Like we're growing a bunch of really good stuff out in Cali uh, with my partners at The Grow and we gotta get out to the people one way or another. Whether it's hitting this demographic in this bag or another demographic in another bag, I don't really care. We collab with really dope people. We make really dope artwork around the bags and everything. We get good products out at good prices. 
at the end of the day, each of the lines is pretty much going to have a unique something unique about it, whether it's some sort of unique product in particular, maybe it's some sort of unique strains. Sometimes we'll get some strains and it'll be like exclusive to this line, exclusive to that line. Sometimes they have a couple of the same strains, but a lot of the stuff is unique. So anytime we do new collabs, go and check their stuff out. Oh, you probably can't see this, but I've got a little cat. He's like pawing out the door. He's so cute. He really likes to be with me, but I don't want to have him out here while I smoke. I don't think cats are supposed to be with like smoke. But anyway. <coughs> you can't bring me to any smoke competitions or anything like that. I can't do none of that. But that pine taste really comes through when it smokes. I don't know how to describe it. And like I said, I, I'm really not, I'm really not some sort of uh, super flavor describer like if you ever seen a wine connoisseur, man, this cat is so cute. If you ever seen a wine connoisseur, like break down all the different flavor nodes, I'm not gonna pretend to be that guy for, for cannabis. I just know what it is good and when it's not good. I know what it should be worth. Like I smoke it and it's like, okay, boom, easily this is the 45 and eighth tier. I smoke it's like, mm, I think it's gotta go for 35. It's good, but it's could be better. I don't want to have it in our 45 bags. So that's pretty much like what I go for when I'm smoking these. Me personally, I prefer, my favorite is like the Indica high, like where you really just get kind of like slumped, relaxed, like, because being a, a business owner and you know, I don't know, I do a lot of things for my business and the job is always changing. As, a, as an entrepreneur, the job is always changing nonstop, but Either way, it's, it's extremely, extremely stressful. So it's like by the end of the day, something that just kind of stress be gone, I can get down with that. Like uh, my mind is going fast. Like it's always going fast. I'm always like thinking about something. So it's like if I ever am going to do something recreational like this, something that's just going to peace. <laughs> that's what I like the best. Like sometimes, I can get down with sativa, but not not really my thing personally. Uh, so when I am testing strains, I would much rather be testing an indica or a hybrid. Like I said, this was supposed to be an indica. I feel pretty like just off the rip and like, I don't know how many hits it is, is but like in, um, but it's like seven hits in or something like that. And my body feels like real chill. Like your brain kind of feels like don't, like stuck somewhere, like just like, like a, like still, that's a better word, still not stuck. Um, and then your, your your rest of your body just kind of like floats on down into, into a nice chill peacefulness. Blue cherry gelato. That's about it for me though. <laughs> this ashtray has a lot of joints in it that just have like three hits taken out of. <laughs> three three to seven hits on a, on a good joint. Depends on how good it is. Honestly, if it's too good, I might have to put it out early. <laughs> a lot of times what I like reviewing the best is the 45 and eighth tier. That stuff is super, super fire. I'd say, you know, best, best way to smoke, even if you're trying to be on a budget, we have some phenomenal budget options. Like honestly, our greenhouse $65 ounce stuff goes crazy. Like for the, for the value and what it is, amazing deal. And the $75 uh, exotic shake, honestly, that's a great smoke as a, that's a, I would rather buy that than anything else if I was on a budget, but the exotic tier for sure, just cause like flavor and terpenes are such a big part about the experience of your cannabis. And you get a lot more of that. A, when it's indoor grown, it's able to produce as much terpenes as possible from the actual grow and preserve it from the way that it's treated thereafter because it's in more Everything's controlled about the environment, like temperature, humidity, etc. So the actual from grow, harvest, cure, all of that, it's kind of just able to be fine tuned in to preserve that terpene profile as much as possible. My aim and hope with base smokes is that honestly, just provide a bunch of great deals to make this product, like I said, super accessible to all different types of people who want whatever different types of things. So anyway, if you watch this far, that was a lot of ranting for sure, but just know I really appreciate you. Like I said, my family really appreciates you. Here's to another hundred years of, of this being able to happen.